Lisa France is in the house. She's a writer director. Roll with me, the documentary that's on Netflix. Talk about moving your environment, right? Mm -hmm. Good yeah. point. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what drew you to this project, why you wanted to capture this journey. Um, well, I'm a big <laughs> fan of pioneers in general, and Gabe was trying to do something that no one had ever done before. So people had gone across the country in a wheelchair, but they had never gone across the country just using their arms in a non-modified chair. So, you know, there wow. are sports chairs. And he did that because he wanted people to say, you know what, I don't have a lot of money maybe, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. But whatever you're given, you could use to make a difference in the world, right? You can, you can inspire people, you can do something different. So no one had ever done that before. So he said, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He had like, <laughs> I'm a big pioneer fan in, in general. Like I've done some pioneering th things too. I played Pop Warner football. I was the first girl to ever play. Wow. wow. Um, I started the first girls cross country team in my high school. I did a Title IX case that was one of the first, if won't, it might be the first to have won a monetary uh, number. You know, anyway, there's wow. things in my own life that I've done as a first. So, and of course I'm obsessed with people like Sally Ride and Jesse Owens and Roger mm -hmm. Bannister and, you know, Harriet Tubman and people that have just, you know, pushed through. So I looked up to see if anyone had done this before and no one had. <sighs> so I had to meet the guy, right? So I go meet mm -hmm. the guy, he's like, yeah, I got like 700 bucks. I'm like, <sighs> Yeah, no, I can't do your movie, sorry. Yeah. So I said, I'll just make you like a little Indiegogo video. And we made one and then I started getting phone calls and that's kind of how it started. So wow. tell us the story. Tell us kind of the, the, the gist of his story of how <clears throat> so excited he, to do this. So he was in a car accident when he was 22 years old and he lost, you know, everything from here down, including sexual function, feeling, mm. everything. And, you know, he, he got through it really well, but then things started to shift for him uh, when he became, you know, in the world of relationships. And I don't want to get into it too much, sure. but you, you, you know, you don't necessarily think about everything when you see someone in a chair. And you don't think about maybe, you might think, oh, I should open the door for them. No, <laughs> actually, that's not really. Mm. What's going on when you lose your legs or you lose feeling from your chest down? So he went through a mental battle with his sexuality mm -hmm. and what it meant to have children, to be a father, to get married. And that started him down a, a, a mental spiral, right? And so he started to use drugs. And he got to a place where he almost died, basically, from drug abuse. And that's when he hit the wall and he said, I better do something with my life right now or it's gonna be curtains. Wow. So that's kind of what was the impetus. Mm. He really wanted to inspire people. He wanted to make a difference for people. And I think that was the initial intention of the journey. But then he brought his nephew with him, who was zero days off of crystal meth and coke. I'm like, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we took him with us. And then we brought this Chris Yonke and Christian Link and Joshua Streeter and Angel Mark Wharton and Chris Cowles. These guys all had different issues and problems. And then here's the lesbian. So we're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you so, captured this journey though in such an inspiring way. We have a look at the trailer. Roll with me. Let's take a peek. 17, 1992. I was on my way to my first professional audition when a woman ran a red light and T-boned me in my cheek. I became a paraplegic and I can't feel from my chest down. By the time I was in my 30s, I was a full-blown addict using coke and crystal meth. If I didn't do something soon, I was going to die. Anyone who's going to be a first to do anything, I'm instantly interested. We have to deal constantly with the stress and pressure of changing roads and conditions, the uncertainty of the drivers behind us. I'm not, I'm not. We knew this wasn't going to be easy. We knew it was going to be dangerous. Oh. We all don't need this. Gabe needs it in his own way to finish. The wind and the rain and the cold, I'm soaked. Every time we met new people and they said they were inspired or they told us their story, that's what fueled the journey. 
This experience showed me the limitless potential of humanity. It helped me find my purpose and gave me the courage to continue to roll. A whole new type of rolling, right? Oh. From wow. rolling on drugs to rolling across the wow. for a cause. So Absolutely. what is the real cause? What is that actual mission? For... For him, just to say he did it? Was it to raise capital? What is the mission behind it? Redemption. Mm -hmm. He had uh, lied a lot to his family, um, also to get Chris sober, and for his own sobriety, like he said, to find mm -hmm. purpose. And, you know, we ended up it is very emotional, you know, you get a yeah. little emotional talking about it because anyone dealing with addiction is struggling every day. Every day is a fight. And if you or someone in your family or some friend of yours, it, I'm guessing no one doesn't have some person in their life who has been through or is continually up against that struggle. And our guys are fighting every day, still to this day. Mm. And, you know, I think our message with this film is the journey never ends. The journey keeps on going. And if you ask for help and you do the work, like for some people that means a program. You need to go, you need to stay, you need to be held accountable. Mm. We were held accountable to one another on the road. And I was held accountable to finish this movie because Gabe and the guys gave their lives for this project. So every day I was, we had no money, like zilch. And I every day was like, well, all these people, all these people we met on the road, they're waiting for this thing. What am I gonna do, quit? I can't mm -hmm. quit and trust me every day. It's like, even Gabe was like, we well, don't have to finish it. I said, no, I'm gonna finish it, but you know, I don't know what it's gonna be like. So we got Jeff Buccioletto, our editor, Sharon Swart, my other producer, um, all of our investors' family, my the Garrison family, Nancy and David Garrison that came aboard, my friend Jerry Cattell, Tom Beers, these people all, the YMCA got involved. I mean, I, I could go down the list. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people made this movie. Literally. So, so let's talk about that because you were talking about earlier how social media has really made this yes. movie. Tell us about that. Um, well, I didn't know <laughs> when I started a Kickstarter, I had no idea, like in Indiegogo, I had no idea what to do. I had never done anything like that before. Um, we didn't have money to hire a social mm. media specialist. So I was like, okay, let me just think, like, what would I do? What would I respond to, right? What mm. would you, re with mm. you, what would you <laughs> respond to? So the video was a big deal. We made a very touching and a very moving video. That was a big deal. And then now, okay, who's gonna watch it? And I literally, and I'm not kidding, I wrote to every single person in my social media. Huh. I had, at the time I had like 3,500 friends and I'd send one and I cut, paste, cut, paste. And I had four people help me do wow. this. And my wow. mother helped me, <laughs> my sisters. Like uh -huh. I had everyone, my friend, uh, one of our uh, uh, co-producers, Mitsuyo, Pete Mays, Louis Morrow, they, everybody was posting, posting, posting. And then I did a MailChimp and I just, Twitter, Instagram, Gabe was doing it. The guys were, everybody was trying really hard to just let us please finish this movie. Let us please get on the road yeah. and then finish the movie. That was the second tier. It was first get on the road. Once we got back, I had 4,000 hours of footage, 10,000 wow. photographs and no money. <laughs> <laughs> no money. And so, you know, and then Avril Lavigne tweeted for us. That was a big deal. Mm. And, you know, it just was that. I mean, getting the word out. There's an organization called Everyone Matters. It's a Facebook page that's now turned into a really beautiful um, a Heathcliff over there. He was a big helper. So I said, will you, I went, reached out to groups about people in chairs mm. or inspirational stories. Would you post our story? And they did. Again, reaching more, just a few more, just a few more. And then that friend told a friend and then, you know, and that's how social media can catch fire for you. Community is everything. But I think it's so interesting to share a bit about your intuition and your journey as a filmmaker. What got you to this point where you were able to make this award winning documentary? I mean, you know, you, your intuition is everything, right? But at least for me so far on this track, it has been. I mean, the very first time I remember being like, I have to do this. I, I remember my friend Joni Reed 
wrote a short film called Fair Play. And I this is such a long time ago, I pulled it out of the fax machine. I was reading it and I was reading it as it was coming out. And I remember I had an intern and I said, do you see this? This is going to win an Oscar nominated worst case scenario. And it did. It got wow. nominated for a Student Academy Award. And then, you know, Ambie Real, my second film, was about a, a, a girl who uh, living in Harlem, she was a Dominican, Afro-Dominican girl living in Harlem who was inspired by the diary of Anne Frank to be a rapper. Wow. Well, mm. what a rad story, right? <laughs> right. That, there's nothing <laughs> go, bad about that. So that, again, intuitively, I knew that was special. I knew it was different. It might have been a little ahead of its time. Um, we shot digital. No one was doing that. I mean, this is like 15 years ago. Mm. So when, I, when, when Roll With Me came about, I felt it. And when I met Gabe, there was something in him, something about him that I just knew, right? He is the greatest, like there's some, he's gonna make it, no proof. And then most recently, I've been following this woman's story. Her name is Laura Luxemburg. She runs an organization called SUBI. And one woman and her son have built an entire world in Luero, Uganda, like a medical facility, a store, um, a piggery, a chicken farm, organic farm, serving over a half a million people. Wow. A woman and her son. How do I not get involved with that? And what are they, what, tell us about that, because you said what it was about, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, this specific <laughs> documentary that I'm going to go make a shorter piece, but it's going to turn into a bigger piece, is about obstetric fistulas. So women uh, in all kinds of developing nations mm. suffer in childbirth. They get a tear in their bladder, and they end up leaking feces and urine on their bodies for the rest mm. of their lives unless it's treated. And in this part of Uganda, there's at least 170,000 or 100,000 women living with this. So oh, they lay on that. pieces of plastic oh, and they wow. sleep away from their families. And the, the impact on the community, on the family, it's just, and it's such a simple procedure. Like over here, we just do it. Like it's just done. They don't even, and they could stop having that problem if they had a C-section instead. Wow. Or if they, you know, there's just different, they're not educated. So the mission is, she's taking some surgeons, Dr. Thomas, I forget her first name. Laura's bringing her over with another master surgeon to teach other medical professionals there wow. how to perform this surgery and treat. This is so incredible. And you're bringing such light and awareness to a cause. I had no idea. Yeah even existed. Absolutely. But I think that speaks so highly of you and what your purpose is as an artist and as a filmmaker. It's not for material gain. No. It's not for the Academy Award. I wouldn't mind one of those. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> but what is, what is your mission, Lisa? I mean, uh, my mission is to bring to life stories uh, from people who are marginalized. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, that uh, and I, 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 every movie I've ever done has chosen me. Mm -hmm. You know, my, I, went, I followed a, a, a story of a guy who went to Cuba to, to decide whether he was going to kill himself or, or recreate a, a forgiveness in his family life. And um, I made a movie about a blind mm -hmm. uh, a, a shut in who was dealing with racism in the South. Like, I find wow. movies that are about pe things that people don't know anything about. Right. And I don't even either. I have to do research too. And I, I love, if I don't know about it, it even makes it more interesting, mm. right? Because then I feel I'm a little more objective. It's not subjective, and yet uh, there's always something. I'm a woman, so I uh, identify with women who are away from their families and who maybe don't have the best medical care. I've been homeless before. I've lived in my car before. I lived in my car on the trek across America. I slept in my car. Wow. So is this your rejection, or is this also your legacy that you're leaving? You know, What's that line for you? <laughs> my my fiance, uh, Lee Friedlander, God bless her, I'm giving her a shout out, I love her so <laughs> much. Uh, she said, I don't care if you drive a cab for the rest of your life, an Uber, whatever, mm -hmm. but finish roll with me because it will mm -hmm. lead to the next whatever you're supposed to do. I was gonna be a nurse. I got into tech, I've tried everything. <laughs> but filmmaking, storytelling for me is my way to give back. Yeah. Mm. It's my way to make a difference. When people watch Roll With Me, I've gotten literally hundreds of messages and emails from people saying, you've changed my life. This movie's inspired me. I wasn't gonna forgive somebody, but now I am. I have been struggling with my drug addiction and my family life, but this movie's, uh, it's a new day of positivity for me. I'm starting a new journey with you. 
So again, that journey, it never ends. Love wow. It. Thank well, you so much for all your work. Incredible. Where can yeah. everyone find and follow your journey? Well, rollwithmethemovie.com is our website. And then uh, Array, who's released our film, Ava DuVernay's company, which is extraordinary. They have been amazing. Thank you, Ava. Thank you, Tulane. Oh, thank you, Mercedes. Our team over there has been putting it out in community screenings. So you can look at ArrayNow.com and just click Roll With Me and you can see all the upcoming screenings. And then, of course, if you have Netflix, you can watch it there. And that's where it is right now. Oh, congratulations. So and come to our Facebook page, Roll With Me, the movie. <laughs> I love it. Stay thank tuned. you. We'll be right back.